آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ما بعد So today we have very important topic We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent a lot of messengers, prophets, and they all deliver the same message. La ilaha illa ana fa'abudun, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. There is only one God, therefore worship Him. This is the message of all prophets, all messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been sent to us. And for the hikmah, for the reason, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose the Prophet sallallahu to be the last Prophet. That's why he completed this religion, he perfected this religion for us, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to avoid the mistakes of the previous nations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the mistakes of every kitab in order to avoid it. So, there is a big mistake that Ahlul Kitab was fallen into. It, we call it Qulul Amad. Qul Al Amad. And there is two concepts in Islam like we call Qulul Amad and Qulul Amad. And because it's too close to each other, so like a lot of people they think it's the same. So Qulul Amal, as we said yesterday, we talked about Qulul Amal, it's the long expectation in life. If you expect to live for a long period, your deeds will be bad. Why? Because if you're doing bad deeds, if you are doing bad deeds, you will think there is a time to repent and make tawbah. You will say, oh, I will make tawbah tomorrow, or the day after, or next month. So you will continue doing bad deeds, and you will not return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you face the death. The death. And then there is no time to regret. Same thing with the salihat, with the good deeds. You want to do good deeds, but you have long expectation in your life. So you think you will live for a long period of time. So you will delay. You will say, Oh, I will do this maybe tomorrow, day after, next month. I will do this. When I get old, I will keep my prayers in masjid when I get like 50s, when I retire. But who knows you will live until you will get retired. So we call this Qul Al-Amal. Qul Al-Amal. So when you have long expectation in this life that you will live to do things. And Hassan al Basri said, Ma min abdin aqal al amal illa asa al amal. There is no slave, there is no servant. Have tool al amal, have long expectation, unless he will have bad deeds. Because he thinks it's okay, I, I, I can't change it later. So now, because I, I talked about Qur'an Amal yesterday, so I will I know some, some brothers they, they don't know enough about Qur'an Amal, but I will not go there. I want to talk about Qur'an Amal. Qur'an Amal, it's also about the affection of time, but it's when already pass on us. Like now, I said about Qur'an Amal, that you have the expectation to live for a long period. But if you already lived for a long period, how that can affect 
your deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us and actually reminded the Sahaba and reminded us after the Sahaba about this. A very strong and beautiful ayah. He said, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدِ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ فِي الْمُنْفَاسِقُونَ He said, hasn't the time yet come to those who believe in Allah to have khushu' in their heart, to soften their hearts to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be humble to the remembrance of Allah and the truth that He sent. And they will not be like those who have the book before them, Ahlul Kitab. He said, فَطَالَ عَلَيْهُمُ الْأَمَدِ When their term prolonged on them, when they lived for a long time, فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبِهِ their, heart, their hearts become hard, and most of them are passive. So they become passive when they lived for a long period, and then they forget. Because sometimes you continue doing ma'asir, and you don't make tawbah until it becomes habit to you. You will do it without even thinking. And same thing can happen to the ta'ah. And both can affect you in a bad way. So now we think if we if we doing ta'ah and the ta'ah become habit, it will be a good thing. Actually, it's a good sign that you're doing ta'at, but if you forget the intention, the niyyah, the ta'at will be useless. So now, if you're doing ma'asir, bad deeds, and you keep it for a long time, you will start doing it without even thinking about it. And there will be no regret about doing mercy. It will be for a long time that you're doing the same thing that you will feel there's no wrong with doing it. And that can affect your heart. It will be hard and nothing can affect it. No reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can remind you same thing with the ta'af. If you're doing salat and siyam and hajj, or if you keep something in, in, in your time, and you forget to renew the knee, to refresh your knee, you will keep doing it without getting the edge of it. And the reason I'm saying this, there is, there is some brothers, they said like, we sometimes we think about something in our life and we find ourselves making wudu and standing on the salat mat and say Allahu Akbar and I find myself in the middle of the salat. I didn't know if I do wudu or not unless I touch my hand. I saw, I, I see my head like wet and I don't know what, what salat I'm praying. They don't know. Yes, it's, it's very good that it's become a habit to you to pray. But without intention, how it's going to help you? You have to have your intention. You have to focus in your salah. And that can happen even to your iman. The Prophet wasallam said in the authentic hadith, and this is very important. He said, the iman getting old in your inside the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Just like the old clothes that you wear, just like the thawb when it gets old. 
He said, فَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يُجَدِّدَ الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ So ask Allah to renew, to refresh the Iman in your hearts. So, if طول الأمد, if طول الأمد can affect our hearts, can affect our Iman, then we have to be careful about it. We have to think twice and more. We have to think in each time and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ask us to do to renew the iman and refresh the iman in our hearts to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the right iman with a strong iman and I will give you an example that each one of us would remember imagine we all do mistakes we all do ma'asi and we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make tawbah to Allah but there is a time when you return and you feel you are like very strong with the ta'ah you just want to do like as much as you can and there is a new Muslims at the beginning of their Islam they start very hard but with the time passing through their Iman will become less and less and less and the Ta'at will be less and less and less so I remember this myself and I know each one of us he would remember when his Iman was very high there is no Ta'at there is no worship would be difficult to him. Everything is easy. But when the time passes, he will get less. So he, he wants to renew the Imam in his heart. He wants to renew the Niyah in his heart. The intention is very important to renew the Iman in our hearts. So now, if we go back to this ayah, because if we want to understand this ayah, we should know how this ayah was revealed to the Prophet And that can help us to know the meaning of the ayah. So Ibn Mas'ud, he said this ayah was revealed after four years of the prophethood of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, Allah subhanahu wa taala reproach us, atabana, or demolish us after four years. But Ibn Abbas and more <coughs> of the scholars, they said this ayah was revealed after thirteen years after the Sahaba moved from Mecca to al Madinah, They said, the Sahaba was Mujdimeen. They had nothing at Mecca. They were in hardship, difficulty. Everything is very hard to them. It's very hard even to pray in Mecca. And they moved to al Madinah. And then the easy life, life of ease, came to them. So now they start praying. They don't care about their safety. They start working. They have families, they have money. And then some of the la'at, some of the worshiping that they used to do in Mecca become a little bit hard to do, it's hard to do. So he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah, reminded us with the ta'at. Same can happen to us when we forget we should remember this ayah. 
You know, subhanAllah, this ayah, when, when, when you recite and you remember in the meeting of Wallahi, it's very strong that even when I, I searched like in the translation, the English translation, I couldn't find anything like even close to it. And this is not the mistake of the, the people who translate the, the words. It's just like, it's the words of Allah. No one can bring something even close to it. It sounds different. It is different actually. When you hear it. And you will find a lot of people from the time of Sahab to the Tabi'i to this time. They return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after they hear this ayah. Two of the greatest Tabi'i actually. They are very well known to each one of us. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak wa al ibn Iyad. Both of them, they were on Ma'si until they hear this ayah. One of them, Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, he said, I used to have Ud, just like the guitar, the lute. And I was playing on my Ud. And then I hear this ayah. When I heard this ayah, hasn't the time yet come to those who believe to soften their hearts to the remembrance of Allah? He said, I left Da'ud. And he said, Oh Allah, my time just came. I will turn to you. And he spent his life worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be very biased person. And he will he actually very well known in, in, in the community of Tabi'in as the best Tabi'in. And he just returned like from guy playing on Oud to a scholar, especially with the hadith. Fudayl ibn Iyad, same story. He said, I was going on my way to meet with a lady. She was the most beloved person to me. And my intention was like something else. Never comes to my mind the Sharia, the Deen. Nothing of this in my mind. I was passing through a house. And I had a person reciting this ayah. He said, I heard this ayah and I stopped. He said, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, my time just came. And he returned to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And wallahi, I, I know a lot of stories that even people between us these days, when they hear this ayah, it's, it's very strong, it's very effective. Because it's a reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That can go, goes in inside your heart and affect your heart. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this ayah, when he talked about فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُ their hearts become hard about the people of the book and the kitab. He said, اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِي الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهِ you should know, or you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives life to the earth after it's dead. And the scholars, they said, this is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's talking about the heart, about the heart, when it becomes hard. And then he said, I give life to the earth after the death of it. He said, this is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even if your heart become dead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make it 
life again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make it soft again if you have the right intention. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to make a dua. Ya muqallim al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala ta'atik. Ya musarrif al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh, the one who can change the heart. Make my heart firm on your ta'a, on your deen. We should keep this dua. Because the heart is like, it can easily change. The Prophet ﷺ said also, he said, the fitting of this dunya can change your heart. Like even you, you start your day, a mu'min, a believer, and you end your day with a kuf wal-ayyad billah. He said, you sell your religion with the sum of this worldly life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. So, we have طول الأمن and it's very bad illness to have long expectations. Yes. Yes. That's, that's the result of it. Procrastination. Like if you have طول الأمن, if you have expectation in, in, in your life, you will start to delay things. But if the time already passed, which is طول الأمد, and you stayed on ta'a or ma'asiyah, you have to think, I'm doing ma'asiyah, I should change it to ta'a and make the word. You do ta'a, you get used to it, you, you get used to start your day with the two rak'at, you should remember why you start this rak'at. Because at the beginning of starting these two rak'at, you thought it's very important to start your day with two rak'at to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then with the time you get used to it, you don't think about this. But you should renew the need. And you should renew the iman in your heart. So each time you renew the iman, you renew the ni'ah, you get the same ajr at the beginning. But if you forget, you will lose your ajr because you're doing something without intention. And in the al-a'malu bin the result of the actions depend on intentions. And we we should keep the dua that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our hearts on his way, on his deen, on his ta'a. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to renew the iman in our hearts. And imagine that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to make this dua. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, the one who got all his sins forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا تَقَدَّمُ مَا تَأَخَّرُ and it's mentioned in the Quran. He made this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what about us? Do we need this dua? Of course. Wallahi, we don't, actually we can't live without these duas. Because if you rely on, on your power, on your ta'a, you will lose in the day of judgment. We only rely on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do our best and we rely on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us success to follow the best of this talk and to renew the iman in our hearts and to make our hearts firm on his ta'a, on his deen, insha'Allah. If you have any questions, my dear brothers and sisters, before we finish, insha'Allah. Any questions? Or the, or, or, or the bit. Okay. He stops first. Yeah, sorry. So, you don't need to say the niyyah. Okay, that's a very good question. Okay, so the brother asking about the niyyah. If he starting the salah, what should he say? So, you shouldn't say anything. The niyyah, you should keep the niyyah in your heart 
From the beginning to the salah, from the salah to the end of it. So this this rook, you have to keep it during the whole salah. You can't even break it. The scholar they said if you break your knee, you break your salah. You can't break the knee. So you start with the knee, and the knee means to keep in your mind that you do in the salah for the sake of Allah, and this is the salah of Tuhr, Asr, Qasr, Jab, whatever. It's Sunnah, Duha, Salat Qiyam al This is will be in your heart. And there is no need to say it in your mouth. Okay? Actually, there is an opinion in the Shafi'i Madhat. They said it's better to say it or it's mustahab, but it's not confirmed from any hadith from Sunnah that the Prophet وسلم, even once he said this is the Salat of Salat al He only said this in Hajj al Umrah. Only said this in Hajj al Umrah. That's why it's Sunnah. To say لبيك الله بعمرة or لبيك الله بحجة في الحج in the Hajj and Umrah, but it's not Sunnah in Salah. Okay, inshallah. So, Sheikh, what's your question? But for the renewal of Iman and uh, for the belief, right? Yes. There's, there are so many ways. Okay, it's it's just not like the same. Is it believing and practicing in life, or how? Like, okay, this is. The Iman, the Iman is increase and decrease in our heart. Yes. I'm sorry again. So the brother asking about the Iman. And as I know like how to how to refresh the Iman or renew the Iman in our hearts. So at the beginning, we should know the Iman increase with the Ta'at and decrease with Ma'asim. And even sometimes, leaving some of the Ta'at can decrease your Iman. So, if you get used to do Salat al and then you leave it, you will start delay Salat al And then it will lead you to something else. Salat al-Asr will be very heavy to you, you'll sleep over. And then maybe you'll sleep at night, you'll not pray Aisha. So it it has like sequence. You 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 like you leave you you leave one and it will lead you to another. And that's how the, the shaitan will play with you. He just asked for a small thing. And then it will lead to something else and something else. The imam that like that the shaitan will not knock your door and like, oh, why you believe in Allah? Just forget about it. He knows like he will say like, go away, I will not do it. So he will come like, you know, you pray five times and you go to the masjid, you go to the masjid, and why like you don't do any sins, like. Why are you offering like more prayers? You should sleep and rest. You do nothing wrong. And you said like, you know, that's right. Okay, I will sleep. I will not pray duha. I will not pray, uh, pray, uh, pray qiyam. I will not do this. And then like, oh, you are so tired in Matillah. And then less and less and less until it will be the point when he asked you like, to quit believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we should be careful. Yes. So my question is, what are, what are some of the actions um, somebody can take to stay, um, to keep their human As I said, always we start with a dua. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to renew the iman and to increase the iman in our hearts. You should keep this in your dua. Always. And I noticed if you increase the ta'at, you will live in a high level of iman. But actually this this means this means like very strong will 
What is da'at? Da'at? Da'at means good, uh, good actions, good deeds. No. There is ma'asiyah, you know ma'asiyah? Yeah, the, the opposite, opposite, opposite of ma'asiyah is da'at. Da'at, okay. Da'at, ma'asiyah. Ma'asi, da'at. That's the meaning of da'at. <laughs> Ma'asi is bad things. Yes. Bad, bad, bad things. Bad deeds. Bad deeds. Yes, sir. No, no, I just give, I, I just gave an example. Okay, there is a hadith. There is a hadith. That's the, there is a hadith that reported as an authentic hadith by Al Bari and many other scholars that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala would say to the son of Adam, offer me. Four rak'at from the morning. From the morning, I would guarantee the rest of your day. Offer me four rak'at from the morning, which means in Salat al Duha, I would guarantee the rest of your day. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you to do more ta'at. And as I said, this hadith reported as authentic by other scholars. And this is Hadith Qudsi. Anyone knows what is Hadith Qudsi? It's a word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. But it's not Quran. It's not Quran. So the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the words, is the Quran. But this is the meaning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the words from the Prophet So it's from Allah to the Prophet وسلم, to explain to us in his words. Okay? Is that Allah khair? I think one thing is frequenting the company of good people also refreshes your mind and keeps it fresh. Like, that's for sure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاسْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَنْعُونَ رَبَّهُ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهِ He said, be patient. Be patient with those who only seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So being with the right company is really help. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَلَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا لِي He said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, don't look to those that we gave them the enjoyment of this life that even can affect your heart and because we don't have much of time I didn't explain the like the most reason of Tul Amal and Tul Amal both of them both of them they said it's because two reasons as Al Ghazali mentioned the first one is Jahl ignorance and the second one is Hubbu Dunya loving of this life because if you look about the enjoyment of this life, you will love it. And it will distract you from the hereafter. And if you don't have the information to know that no one lived forever, it will, you will get distracted as well. So, I'm sorry we don't have much time. The brothers already prepared the data. Which surah is this ayah? Which which one? Which, this one. That this one. The first one is Surah Al-Kahf, and the last one, uh, I think, the the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. Just quick question: Like, Hadith can be uh, like revealed from Allah to any other one except the Prophet? Hadith Qudsi, as they said, they said the meaning, the definition of Hadith Qudsi is the meaning from Allah and the words from the Prophet I mean, like it can be narrated. From someone else except the Prophet? No. no. Who can say Hadith Qudsi if, if there is no reporter of the Hadith? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed with the Wahi the meaning of the Hadith Qudsi. So no one from the Sahaba can say, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this. Unless he hears it from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why there is uh, in, in Usul al fiqh they said if the opinion of Sahabi there is no way to get it with his own opinion or his own knowledge that's referred to the Prophet 
Like if the Sahabi said in this, like the second sky there is an angel, say this, this and this, that means he hear it from the Prophet because there is no way to get this knowledge except the Prophet will be in the chain. Okay? Jazakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to achieve success with following the right insha'Allah and show us the falsehood and give us success to avoid it.